salvation is not heaven first. It's to fulfill his mandate for you on earth. If you don't fulfill that mandate, we change straight. Your duty is not to change people. Your duty is to tell them the word of God. Then take them to prayer for the Holy Ghost to change them. You know what people do? They pray. They to change. They pray. They to change. But they don't tell them the word. Prayer for people's souls is not enough. You must tell them. I tell people that the worst mistake you make in your life is to listen to me. Because as soon as you listen to me, there's no, the thing I tell you will torment you the rest of your life. And there's a philosophy by people that rich people don't go to heaven. It's not true. Genesis 13 will tell you that Abraham was a rich man. And Abraham was in heaven. So it means that there was another rich man in heaven. And there was another poor man in heaven. So heaven is not made for rich or poor. It is made for people who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. I'm going to talk to us this morning on what I've titled, What Happens When We Die? You see, sometimes we live as if we will not die. I've seen people die at 120 in this modern times. And I've seen some die at one. I've seen some die at two years. I've seen some die at what we call still men. I've seen people who drove to work very healthy and couldn't return home because of death. Either through accident, through normal headache. The, the truth is that I've seen people who I, I thought would never grow old. That today, they are so old. And recently, Mammy was telling me that don't think because you look young, everybody looks young. You try and look at pictures of your legs. And when I did, I realized that I'm also growing old. Now, you see, when you have a, a child in around you, you never see that the child is growing until somebody who has not seen the child says that you are growing and I tell you people that when you see somebody and say that you are growing don't forget that it's not that child that is not growing but you also, you are growing it is something it's so easy for you to look at others and not look at you my first scripture that I want us to look at is Proverbs chapter 14 verse 28 a king glories the number of the loyal of his loyal followers by dwindling population spells room for any leader now I like what the Amplified also said the Amplified class said in a multitude of people is the king's glory but in the lack of people is the prince room so the Bible says that when there is multitude of people is the king's glory but when there's a lack of people is the prince who is wound and you see God is our king or if God is not your king so when a lot of people come to Christ God takes the glory many people come to God like that. our worshipers we glorify your name God looks at you and say how are you glorifying me when they are empty seats because one of the things that gives God glory is when people are around the king. Are you, are you with me? People are around the king is, is glorifying. And when people are not around the king, it is a shame to the prince. In other words, a prince is somebody who is a son to the king. So in the lack of people, a prince is ruled, you know, a prince does not have a future. And let's not forget that we have an interesting thing in our world that people don't know that there is a battle for souls. God created me and you, right? It's like you have a son or a daughter. You give birth, you train the person. Then when you're a boy, and then when you're a girl. And you know that this person, when this lady or this guy marries the person, the person is ruined. Please are here with you. It's like all your labor is in vain. 
So you 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 leave America and come to Ghana and come and spend time with your daughter or your son. Try and convince him or her that boy here, not girl here, on any poor boy, it will worry you. And then you go back to America and you hear that they have done with that, that is how God came to live with us on earth, to come and teach us that Satan is not our friend. Now, at this rate, the visa is only two. You come, you go, you can't come back. So what he's doing is that he's been calling relatives in Ghana that advise him more. I advise her, why are you not here? He's been calling because the ticket is blood. The ticket on earth is blood. And he's appointed to man to die once after that judgment. So he's died already. He can't come and die again. So he's been sending people to come on earth and advise people that we don't get into the marriage. Don't get I know I know you love the person. I know that the way he tickles you is nice. I know the kiss is nice. I know the romance is nice. I know that drinking is nice. I know that smoking is nice. I know that all these things is nice. But it will ruin you. Are you with me? Now, in the book of Luke 14, 21 to 23, you read a very common story where Jesus himself told the story, a parable. Where have I given the title? What happens in the where, where Jesus is given a parable and said that a man held a party and at a party he invited people to the party expecting that the room would be filled. Charlie, the room was not filled. So he said his servant is that go to the highways, the byways, bring the blind, bring the lame, bring the crippled, the useless, the poor, the needy. And bring them anywhere like me. what everybody said no there's people you can't bring he said go and compel them to come the, the compel is what we call an akazo and yazo which means that whatever method you use as long as it will not cost you your salvation some of you when you say any method it means that you go and kiss them and bring them no 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 because you are more important to him than that other method you understand that one so he said go and compel them whether you tie their leg, whether you seize their foot, are, are you with me? Oh, uh, there, there comes a time that you must push people to, to make sure that they get saved. Are you with me? So he said, Go and then the servant in verse 20. Let me read because some of you look 14, 21 to 20. So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry. Send me some go out quickly. Some say, Do it quickly into the streets, the lanes of the city. Bring hither the poor, the maid, and the house, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. In other words, as soon as, as much as there is room, God wants the room filled. As much as there is room, the room has got to be filled. Now let's read on. And the Lord said unto the son, Go out unto the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So this is Jesus speaking, saying that God wants the house filled. Are you with me? God wants the house what filled. And I'll get deeper into it because many people don't know that when a house is not filled, it, it reduces the glory of the king of kings. It looks like Satan has won. Because there's a competition for the souls of human beings. And the sacrifice that Jesus has paid on this earth, Satan has not even paid 1%. And yet, he's using certain things to win people. Are you with me? It's like you take everything to make somebody get educated. And someone is using feelings, feelings, to pull the person into condemnation and destruction. Are, are you with me? Oh, are, are you with me? I, I know I know a guy who told me that I, I only listen to my mother because you see what this lady gives me, my mother doesn't give me. And I what does your mother give you? He said, My mother cares, I know. My mother gives me hug, I know, but there's something else <laughs> that this lady gives me. That 
my mother or my father can't give me. Hey. So the Bible said in Luke chapter 16, 19 to 20, in a TLB version. The Bible said, and I want to teach you the reality of life after death very fast. Life and life and after you die, and then I'll teach you something. So Jesus had to give another parable. And in this parable, Jesus said there were two rich, there was two people. One was rich and one was poor. And in Luke 16, 19, he said there was a certain rich man, Jesus said. Now you know, sometimes people, Jesus talks about heaven and hell. They people say that, oh, heaven and hell doesn't exist. But he says, say he lived, that one it exists. He says, say breakthrough, that one it exists. He said, your sins are forgiven, that one it exists. But Jesus is talking about heaven and hell now. He must say, oh, it's just a parable. What parable? A parable is a heavy story with an earthly meaning. So he said, there was a certain rich man. Say, a certain rich man. So point to somebody and say, there's a certain rich man. They didn't mention anybody's name, so it can be me, it can be you. A certain. Who was splendidly clothed and lived each day in mirth and luxury. And he a one day, Lazarus, a diseased beggar, was laid at his door. In other words, Lazarus had, was always laid. He was poor. So by opportunity, rich and poor people have met. Man and woman has met. Young and old have met. People from different walks of life have met. Then the Bible said, as he lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dust will come and lick his open source. That happens sometimes. Some believers who even go to church who are born again, they see unbelievers in their sin and they are like, You are born again, man. So last verse was craving for the delicacy of this rich man. But it's like the dogs were rather coming to lick his wounds. In other words, he was even going to more pain. He was going through more pain. Are you with me? Finally, the beggar died. Amen. And was carried by angels. So when a believer dies, angels carry you. And was taken to him, Abraham's bosom, where the righteous will be. So when the believer died, he was carried by angels. To be with Abraham in the place of the righteous dead. Not too long. It, not too long. Someone asked me a question. Why is it that drunkards don't die early? Witches don't die early. Good people die early. Sometimes God waits for these people to see if they will change before they die. Yeah. God has to wait. Maybe one day this drunkard will be saved. One day this drunkard all this character will become born again but the rich man also died and was buried and his soul went into hell this is not me this is jesus speaking and it's in our bible his soul went into hell now if you don't know how hell looks like look at doom song <laughs> you see when when there is doom song and you you bought meat and things and they are getting spot in the fridge and you are hot and it's not that it's not that it's not that you don't have money you have prepaid you have air condition you have everything but the only thing it needs is power and those things are all not working that is how hell looks like you have everything and it don't function are you with me you have everything you can remember how rich you were how successful you were how you could just command this one come and they come go and they go and you are like how? Now nothing is working. But this guy, Lazarus, was in heaven. Where now everything was working. But he has power. He has, he has light. He has energy. Then in torment, he saw Lazarus in a far distance from Abraham. Now know this very well. One of the interesting things you will know is that when we die, we will see each other. The rich man saw Lazarus and Lazarus saw the rich man. You know what it means? 
when we die, we will see our friends. We will see our mothers, we will see our fathers. We will see our neighbors, we will see our teachers. We will see all the wicked people. And if, let's imagine, God forbid, God had mercy on me. If every year he goes to hell, you will see me in heaven. He said, ah, so if you are, it's like, so it's, it's not like, you see, when you can be fainting in life or failing in life, they can hide. Nobody knows where you are. But in heaven and hell, when you see someone say, ah, I go away, you and go. That's the most interesting thing because everybody, you just say, ah, this person, why? The way he used to pray, ah, this person, he knows Bible scriptures. Ha! Ah. So the most painful thing is that we will see each other. A church member who just became born again that day, we see his pastor. Then we see his senior pastor in hell. And the new person just became born again. He said, Don't for another day. So, one of the interesting things is that when the Bible said they will weep in the national teeth, I, I sometimes believe that some people will be in heaven and they will cry. Because you know what? You will see people you loved, who are your besties, your best friends your neighbor, your business partner, the one you talk to often, and you see the person in hell. You see, the way you see that your neighbor is misbehaving and you don't talk to them, now you are okay with it too. Because at least it has become friends with benefits. I think you did hear. But when you die, and you see that now this person is case is permanent. Like, let me give you an example. Just imagine that God shows you God forbid, and I've seen this before. You are there and God gives you a vision. In a vision, you saw that somebody had an accident and their legs were cut off. And you didn't pray. You didn't do anything. And finally, the person has the accident and the legs are cut off and it's permanent. Whenever you see the person, you have guilt. Whenever you see the person, you feel content. You see, for the rest of your life, it is not you who put the person in the car. It is you are not the cause of the accident, but you never can forgive yourself anytime you see that person in that condition, and that is how heaven and hell will look like when we see our neighbors, when we see our brothers, when we see our sisters languishing in hell. I'll take it now. I got your attention. Now, who is around you that you know? I send more back. Let's move on. Father Abraham, he shouted. You see, when people go to hell or go to heaven, they now know the difference between fathers and non fathers. He saw Abraham and called, Father Abraham. Now you know Abraham is your father. Now you know somebody is your pastor. Now you know that somebody was your prophet. He said, Father Abraham. He shouted, have some pity. Send that slow. You see, people think that when you go to hell, you can still control people like you are controlling on it. Oh, hey, control my children. Oh, hey, what did you have No, 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 no. You can't do that. So he thought like, oh, Lazarus was poor on earth. And so I can still control. The interesting thing that there's a philosophy by people that Rich people don't go to heaven. It's not true. Genesis 13 will tell you that Abraham was a rich man and Abraham was in heaven. So it means that there was another rich man in heaven and there was another poor man in heaven. So heaven is not made for rich or poor. It is made for people who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. So someone says, so those people like Abraham and God, who didn't see Jesus there, how did they go to heaven? Even the Bible, I think first Peter, it will tell you, and if you have to read Matthew chapter 26, it will tell you that when Jesus died, he went to the grave and he preached to them. And those who had the gospel rose up and came and showed themselves to the world. And then they went back to Abraham and Joseph. So you can easily know that there is nobody on earth or our grandfathers who died before Christ died, like Abraham, Lot, and Co. All of them have had the gospel. Am I talking to somebody here at all? Oh, are you here with me? Every one of them have heard the gospel. So he said, For the Abraham, he shouted, House of pity, 
Say Lazarus over here, if only he can dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish and in this flame. So the guy was telling us how hell looks like. He said he wanted just a drop of water. A drop of water. Just, just that. It was there. You see, heat. The heat. How many have been tested before? I don't know if you have been hungry before. Can you imagine that living in hell with no water and food the rest of your life? Um, be fasting, but we be fasting by force. <laughs> you see that all the fasting we're supposed to do on earth that you didn't do, eh? you will do it. Also, in your fortune, you may hundred years fasting. And this is that your stomach is paining you, your systems are all not doing well, but you are not dying. You see, the, the, there's no death. So it's like if you suffer, it's the way they are commit suicide and go. This time, if you even come, if you take knife and cut your head, she said the, the head will cut uh, and rope uh, before you sleep, you come and sit back on. You won't die. Am I talking to somebody here? Or am I here? So he said, let somebody send Lazarus. And Abraham said to him, son, you know, Abraham agreed that you are my son. So it means that parents will see their biological children. The fact that your father is a pastor doesn't mean that you make it to heaven. Oh, yeah. The fact that your, your mom is a prayer warrior doesn't mean that you make it to heaven. The fact that you sing in church, pray, preach, doesn't mean that you make it to heaven. Abraham still called him my son. Remember that during your lifetime, you had everything. You don't even have time for prayer. You didn't have time for church. You had time for business, for concern, for TikTok, for WhatsApp. You can be on social media 26 hours a day. I can prove to you, people spend more time. You know what? They, they, their 24 hours is not enough, so they send some to, let's say, Pastor Frank said, watch and tell me the story. So, whilst, whilst they are watching this one, this one is telling them the next story. So, ah, so, is that what is happening at MPP office? Okay, let me watch the NDC one. <laughs> so, when you're more than 24 hours, <laughs> are, are you with me? Say, for Abraham. Okay, I've left this one. Abraham said to him, is anybody in the city? Because the person is back. If you are back, you go to hell. You must be on time. It's in the Bible. I'll prove it to you. If you are not on time in life, you can because by the time the trumpets are, if you are not at the entrance, on call. Let's continue. You remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted, and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. You see, if we read Matthew chapter six, he said, "Let's not invest in things that moth and rust do destroy." Rodents will destroy it. You know, we have a lot of time to build houses, buy cars, make a lot of money, even make a lot of friends, and we know we will leave all of these behind. But we never invest, we never build a place where our soul will rest one day. Are you hearing? Even now, there are people who have been doing insurance for burial. They are making preparation for when they, they are buried. But have you also made insurance for where you will live the rest of your life? No rich man can go with car, houses. Actually, most rich people, great when they are dying, they never ask for where is my car. They ask for where is my son, where is my wife, where are my friends. They look for people who they can relate with. They look for loved ones. You realize that all these things, that certificate, that doesn't make you have time for God. That certificate can't defend you. Actually, they'll give you a death certificate for people to chop all your property. That lady or that guy you are basically chasing all your life will be married to somebody else. All the creams you've been buying, you can't use them. Ah, you are not here at all. You see that all your shoes, they only put one on your leg. Only one. And they'll give you a last pause. 
and give you a, 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 a small box then they'll put you in and those who will cry and cry I'll go with you I tried one month a pastor friend died and we sent a team to them that oh their pastor is one year can they celebrate the church said no 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 the family should do the celebration they are busy with other things this man had lived over 30 to 40 years building the church the church new leadership has forgotten that he exists that's where you know and sometimes let me say this before i even get there people say this especially if you go to some of these churches and they say that some people somebody called me said man of god can you pray for the soul of this one who is dead and i said when you die no no prayer works write this thing down say let's pray that your member man will be papa da. no after death no amount of prayer will save you the priest can come and stand there and say he was a good man he was a they do the stand in some churches they even pray for the souls of dogs they do burial service for dogs and pigs because they will get offered but the truth is that when you die it is appointed to man to die once after that what judgment so nobody can sit, pray and say your fasting look when david's son died before this child would die the child was sick david fasted and prayed that the child would come to life as soon as the child died the bible said david got up ate, and the servants came and said, ah when he was not well you were fasting and praying now that he's dead you are eating they said i can't go to him he can come to him me hey uh, he, I, he can't come to me i can go to him once he was alive i could have done something but now that the child is gone there is nothing i can do so many people think that when they die they go to pastor the pastor but by a prayer that God will give this person a good place to rest. It's not possible. It is only when the person is alive. For the living dog is better than a dead lion. Please, am I teaching something here? So, don't wait for anybody to die. Say, Pastor, pray for that God will give them a good place to sleep. 26. And besides, there is great space separating us and anyone wanting to come to you from here is stopped at the edge and no one ever crossed over in other words what he was saying is that you see between you heaven and hell there's a big gap there's like gulf in between you can't cross it you can see each other you can talk to each other you can wave each other it's like kanda and nima I don't know what I'm talking about. It's like Ghana and Togo. The same community. I can see big, big mansions at this side. Then you can see cluster of houses on the opposite side. And there's only one road separating them. The land here is very expensive. The land here is quite normal. And it's like the whole world. Every part, in, even in America, there are places like that. If you go to New York, there are places you go, you see rats, they are bigger than my head. You have just at the next junction, the rich people are living there. So you go to heaven or you go to hell and you can see your neighbor. Can you just imagine you see somebody? And let me tell you this it is believed that we don't have proof. That whatever sin you were doing much on earth, when you go to hell, you'll be doing it more. So if you like women, whatever you were doing, you want to change. But the more you want to change, the more you do. And the more your sentence increases. Because they'll tell you every act of sin, let's say it's 10 years. So if you can stop, we'll bring you out. Then you go there. You don't want to stop lying. As soon as you say, I'm lying again, there's that lying. Because see, at that place, the Holy Spirit who must convict you, who, who, whose word can dwell in you, for you not to continue in sin, is no more. Sounds super freedom. Take your freedom. Hello? Then the rich man said, Oh, Father Abraham, then please send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers. Hey, this solely Sunday, you are coming with five brothers and sisters. Oh, you didn't hear me. He said, You have what? Five brothers. Five. How many? Five. Now you look.
look at yourself. You there, you own is not five. He said, I have five brothers. Amen. To warn them about this place of torment. Lest they come here when they die. It's unfortunate, but people, when they are in hell, that is when they want to tell people about it. Sometimes those who die, I've seen people who say things like, please forgive me, but I've not gone there before, and I don't think you should. Because I'll use the Bible to prove it. I've heard people say that they went to heaven, but they went to hell, and they came, and God said they should want their world. Well, from this point of what Jesus said, he said, nobody will come from the dead and want the living. So I don't know about that. Maybe one day, if I get my own, I can talk. But based on this Bible, I'm talking about he said that nobody will come from the dead to come and preach the gospel to the living. And God has given us the power to raise the dead. But not to even pray for the souls that are dead. And when they go, they are awkward. awkward. Is, that, is that all clear now? So he said, let they come here and come and die. I don't want them to go through what I'm going through. But let's see what he said. But Abraham said, the scriptures has warned them again and again. Your brothers can read them any time they want to. Hey! Some of you, as we sit here, we send you the link. You will share. NDC MVP, you will share. What you say, you? you will share. Have you seen the accident on this road? You will share. Have you heard that this neighbor is in trouble? You will share. You like to share other things you want to be first in news, best in entertainment. <laughs> or you want to be, it's all about you. You know it's all about you. Which one is that? So you know all those ones. <laughs> so, he was like, you have the Bible. Look at us and say, you have a Bible. These days, people pretend that oh, my Bible is on my phone. You don't open the place. You don't open the Bible. I have a thing I have on my phone that is able to tell you the apps you open often in a month. And always my Bible is number one. Followed by YouTube. Because God, I wish you had the other one. I listen to preachings. You, it is TikTok. Now, next, next, next. What next is that? Then you go and your Snapchat, they go and see what you wrote, what are people saying about it. Have you checked, have you spoken to your friends about Christ? So that you check about what they are saying about it. Let's move on. Look at them say the scriptures must work. I didn't hear. Say they have the scriptures. Let them read it. So you can put that one on your statues. Matthew 16, 29. Abraham said, the scriptures have been there to warn them again and again. Your brothers can read them any time they want to. In other words, you is just about making time to read. Any time they want to. Am I reaching something here? The rich one replied, no, Father Abraham, they won't bother to read them. They will read it. Look at someone say, have you read your Bible? Even today, as you are sitting here, you've not even opened a Bible verse. Well, um, you are depending on the screen, and the screen has disappointed us. And you have Bible on your phone, you even underline it. Now, I mean, I mean, for verse 29, God told me, start to say, okay, I'm okay. home. Since when did you become born again? Since when did you become saved? He said they won't read it. They won't even bother. But if, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, they will turn from their sins. This is where I said that. This is what Jesus said. But Abraham said, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't even listen to someone who raises from the dead. So listen, oh, Jesus was saying that we have Moses and the prophet. We have what? That's the key. You say, we have Moses and the prophet. Let them what? Hear them. In other words, if today you won't hear me, you won't hear Jesus. Someone said, Jesus, let me make a sign. I met you. Oh, boy. 
Judas was spoken to by Jesus. True or false? Ah, answer me. Who was Judas master? Okay. If Judas pastor was Jesus, and they still went to commit suicide, you should know that if even Jesus was your pastor, Moses was the pastor of all the Jews. Only two people made it to the promised land. Only two. If you see that pastor, Moses they didn't go. So people say things like, let somebody from the dead come and tell us. No. He said, the people to listen to are Moses and the prophets. Look at some say, who is Moses? Moses is the law. And who is prophet? We are the prophets. So in Acts chapter 10, you will know that a man by name Cornelius was a good man. Let me tell you that good people will go to hell fast. He was a good man. And his goodness brought angels to visit him too. The fact that angels visit you doesn't mean you make it to heaven. Number three. They also say he was an arms giver. The fact that you give tithes and offering, big offerings to church, doesn't mean you make it to heaven. The next also says that, am I talking to somebody here? He prayed and fasted. The fact that you pray and you fast doesn't mean you make it to heaven. It brought, this thing brought an angel who came and said that, send men to Joppa to go and talk to a man named Peter. And let Peter come and preach to you the gospel. Because the gospel must be preached by human beings, not angels. So listen, I repeat it and I repeat it again. Your money you give to God will not take you to heaven. Ah, am I preaching to somebody? <laughs> if not, Cornelius would not be talking only for Peter. Having angelic visitation will not take you to heaven. Oh, amen? Oh, your amen is not good at all. Uh-huh. So in, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, I've thought this, this was one of my, years ago, my best scripture when it comes to doing evangelism. In Acts chapter 10, where God sent um, Cornelius to go and look for Peter to come and preach the gospel to him. But the gospel must be preached by human beings. Look at something, your friends, your family, your loved ones, they are waiting for you. No angel will change them. And tell them, the, the Bible, they won't read. And say if they read, they won't understand. In Acts 10, 38, this is what Peter said. It's how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Number one, with Holy Ghost. Some say Holy Ghost. After you accepted Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you need to have the Holy Ghost. Number two, you need to have power. Some say power. What is power? Nobody can walk in raw power consistently if you are living under the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, which leads to hell. Jesus overcame these three things to flow in power. Look for one, look for, look for one, look for 14. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Look for one in verse 14. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Am I teaching something here? So he said, Peter said that this is how Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost. Some say with the Holy Ghost and with the power. Who went about doing good? I can't hear you. So you see, doing good is one of the things. So don't say that I mean you're good with you. Number who went about doing good? Number three, four. Healing all who were oppressed by the devil. You must go to people and preach the gospel to them. And number five, and God was with him. So even Jesus had these five things. That shows that he was anointed. So hear me. You can never tell me you are anointed. When I don't see these five things in you, I should repeat it. Look, five things Holy Ghost. Okay, Pastor Francis, I should name the five things. You need the Holy Ghost, you need power, 
you need to be doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the devil. In other words, oppressed by the devil is people who are being tormented by evil spirits. They must hear the gospel, they must hear the salvation message, and in fact, God is with you. Five. Now, if you don't have this thing, I question your anointing. Some of you, the whole is this microphone also okay? I thought this one was good, but it's worse. I'm hearing Pastor Peter, please help me. I said, I've, I've seen people who say they're anointed. Meanwhile, they don't win shows. They are not good. Now, let's look at some things that will make people go to hell. I believe you don't have these five things, you go to hell anyway. Combined. Not taking one and leaving one. It's a more Holy Ghost. A man with the Holy Ghost without power is a fake Christian. Because Holy Ghost without power is a sign that you are not living according to the dictates of God. And it is most likely the Holy Ghost you have is the familiar spirit. The real one is gone. The next one. In Matthew chapter 25, you read a story about Jesus saying that he gave talents to people. He gave one five, he gave one two, and he gave one one. And the one had one went to hide the talent and did not use it. And when the master came, he took the one, the one who had five, he gave him ten. The one who had two, he gave him four. And then the one who had one and went to hide it, hide the gift and the talent. He took the talent from him and gave it to the one who was doing very well. And the next thing that happened to this person was that he said he put him in hell where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you are in church, you are born again and you are not using your gift and your abilities for God, you can go to hell. Mm. He who knows what to do and will not do it will go to hell. You know very well that this person needs salvation. You know very well that this person, if he comes to church, will be okay. You know very well this person, if he gets that one Ghana city that you are going to give to your girlfriend, if he gets it, his life will turn around. My dear, how? Hello? Okay. Don't tell anybody. People have devised always means of making it. When I get to my yard like this, I have people at my yard. Know what they do? No suicide wipers. Almost every man they want to change my wiper. Not for me to pay. They will change it and say, Pastor, God bless you and you will go. You know why? They know that if you're a good person. Like today, I met one who changed my wiper about last Monday. And I saw him this morning. Ah, when do you go to church? Life is tough. Oh. And I need to save money because my child has to go to school. The Lord said, give him something. Why pano? What they are my guy. Charlie. Are, are you with me? You know, they keep they keep doing it. Sometimes they will come near my car and say, Ah, don't we need to change this pastor? I don't have money. So charger. Oh, pastor, you don't need charger. I said, I'm take it anytime, pay up. They are doing you good for you to do them good one day. Now, many people are not, they have anointing, they have their resources, but they are wicked. Wicked is past participle of wicked. It means that as for you, the wickedness cannot be changed. Matthew 24, verse 14. People who have not heard the gospel is the main reason why the coming of Christ have delayed. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10 says the day of the Lord shall come like a thief in the night. When God is coming, he comes like a thief. No thief wants you that he's coming. And the truth is that nobody knows the day they will die. I'm in bridge ministries. As of if you live long, it is true. You will live long. But let me tell you this. I was teaching this on Sunday. People say, I shall not die, but live. Continue. What is the word? I shall not die, but live to do what? 
So if I'm not declaring it, you will die. And you will not live. So don't misquote the scripture. I shall not die but live. God wants you alive. Because without, I was telling somebody yesterday, that let me tell you this, when it comes to salvation, if God just wants us to just go to heaven, as soon as you become born again, you die. But he wants you to get your, some of you, the people who God brought you to become your friends, that have become your boyfriends, your girlfriends, he brought them to you for salvation. Now you have put them into condemnation. All of a sudden, this person has become your business friend, your business partner. You think God just brought them to you for just being friends? Oh, sorry. First, those the way you are going to church, Pentecost, Ubeboduku, not for our Bible. So everybody knows you are going. These days, they quaba. Nobody even knows where you are going. And these days, they dress these ladies wear to church. You wonder if they are going to club or they are going to church. So as soon as you are going, you don't even know whether they are going to church. But they are dressed, you think they are going to club. Those days, when they are going to club, it was short. When they are going to church, it is long. Everything is covered. I say, oh, wow, sorry. In my quote, <laughs> my assume, my yes. uh -huh. when you see the address, you see that, oh, well, uh, when they come home and they want to fast, my mom going to my child, they have two bra. Then they remove the dress and go and wear the one for the fight. But these days, there's no difference between the one for church. I think I'm not preaching. <coughs> Hello? Oh, I can't hear you. Matthew 24, verse 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So, you know what? One of the reasons why Christ has not yet come is because somebody has not heard the gospel. So, thank God for social media. <coughs> Sorry. People think social media is for the devil. What the social media is doing lately is that everybody is hearing the gospel. And one thing to allow about social media is social media is exposing fake men of God. COVID came and people changed their churches very fast. Some churches have not been able to come back after COVID. Because you go to church, they lie to you every day. They lie to you every day. Now COVID comes, they say everybody stay there, we are online. You're online, you see another church pops and let me go and see you. You say, ah, this people they are teaching is different from what my pastor has been teaching me. Especially if you go to places like America, so many churches can't come back again. I know prophets in Ghana who have stopped doing prophecy and they become teachers. Because during COVID, people were coming on air for two things during COVID. Or three. Prayer. Two of us. The word of God. And salvation. And I think God got so many souls during COVID than you have ever gotten since Christ left. Hey! Hey! <laughs> okay. Do you know that if you are a coward, you go to hell? Let me make it more weird. If you are fearful, in Luke, I'm uh, sorry, in Revelation chapter 21, if you look at the King James, he said, But the fearful, but I, won't, I won't deceive, it's not fearful like Muslim. What the word fear is there is talking about is, can you take Revelation 21 verse 8? He's talking about those who, who are cowards. Let me read the TLB version. This one said there. Let's look at it. Characteristics of people who are likely to go to hell. If yours is part, know that in the Yeshua Number one, cowards. Those who turn back from following Christ, they turn back. Some of you, as soon as you hear that it's time for church, watch they do before. Number two, those who are unfaithful to God. Or what we call unbelieving, they are not faithful. You said you're giving your life to Jesus. Now he's telling you, sit here, come here, go here. You say, No, I don't want it. Now, 
Whose life did you give it to? If you gave the life to Jesus, he should be able to tell you why you should be at what time. Do you know why a lot of women who are older and have made it can't marry or won't marry? They will tell you, intimate me at my age. Then a man will come and tell me, Cook. wash the dish, dress the bed, and where are you coming from? And I, I remain single because they enjoy that singleness. Because when you get married, you will not you will not have a life of your own. So if Christ has become your Lord and personal Savior, you don't have a life of your own. I always tell people that if the man of God says, be healed, the Lord says you will prosper, he shall receive it. Is the Lord says come to church of I for no cultural. Heaven and hell, it's not true. God is too loving to take all of us through hell. Eh? Then you're going to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. He has to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. The next one, the corrupt, 419. The next one, madras. Madras. And look, madras is not only taking a knife and killing somebody. Some of you, the words of your mouth have killed somebody's vision. Have killed someone. Now you can't ma or can Now you are not here at all. Because of you, somebody has stopped power. Somebody has stopped church. The next one, the immoral. You know what is immoral? Watching porn, dressing provocatively to attract people. You see, sometimes when you dress provocatively, and these days men also dress so. Now, men are power dressing at their draw wedding camera. We say a new trouser style. Nothing I'm chrome. You see, somebody will see it, will not approach you. But the taste of faith will draw the person to go and look for somebody. Hey, are you here? You are not here. Oh. Are you here? If the person is married, maybe the person will look for the wife or the husband. But if the person is single, what is immoral? What is immoral? Last four thoughts. Some of you can be in your room and remove somebody's dress in your brain. Why is it that you are visiting this guy? All of a sudden, your underwear has changed. You are saying you are in case. You know what is in case? The expectation of the sinner shall not be cut off. <laughs> the immoral, those conversing with demons. Listen to this one. Those conversing with demons. Please listen. It's not me who said it. Who are you? I am from the father's grave. What are you coming here to do? I've been here for two thousand years. Hey. And some of our churches, they only converse with demons. And we believe what these demons are saying. My young is saying, I've done this to them. I've done this to them. I've done this to them. When the Bible says that the devil is the father of all lies, and when he speaks the truth, he speaks a lie. And so that's the church you like. So I oh, no, I don't know. When they pray for me, the demon in my family come on. Then he start saying things. I've not heard anything. Was the boast for you to know that they are powerful? Can we continue? Those conversing with demons and idol worshippers. And look at the next one. How many have I mentioned so far? Oh, let's list them. This is the seventh one. Idol worshippers, the seventh one. Eighth one. All liars. Asamaba. Asamaba. All liars. Their doom is in the lake that burns with fire and suffer. This is the second death. Wait. Look at someone say, when's the last time you lied? 
And some of us these days, we can even lie to men of God. We can lie in the name of God. Powerful lies. And when the man of God says, it's true, it's true, he said, he believed it. My pastor believed it. We can throw off my clean. Maybe can say, me to me, me to me, me to me, me to me, me to me. So, thank you. So, how many did you mention? Eight. So look at this eight. Uh, and I'm sure you know people who are into this eight. The next one. These people will make it to hell straight. Dual citizens. Pretenders. Cold and hot people. To tell you about sorry back home. The next time I tell you yes. They are praying today, tomorrow they can't pray. Today they are in Revelation chapter 3, 14 to 20. He said, I know your works. I know you are neither hot nor cold. Don't sleep. Wake it. I know you are neither hot nor cold. Many people are neither hot nor cold. They are neutral. They are neutral Christians. I know you are. You are neither hot, hot nor hot. I wish you were one or the other. Do you know the most dangerous Christians are the people who are lukewarm? They are, they are not hot. They are, they are not cold. Let's read. Verse 15, 16. But since you are merely lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. This is God speaking. Sir. I'm maybe. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. So there are so many people who are already in the book of life. Their names were written as Christians. So don't say once saved, forever saved. I pity them. He said, You were once in my mouth. You were in me. But because you are lukewarm. When we were young, there was a song we used to sing. Oh, be very good. Yeah, yeah. Lucky. Oh, be very good. Yeah, yeah.
It's not a seat in your car. You have a pre-recorded one. Not they are sure. <laughs> then you are listening with the people in the car. Look at somebody say, don't be spewed out. So verse 17. And he says that you say I'm rich. With everything I want. I don't need a thing. But you don't realize that you are spiritually wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. When you are lukewarm, this is your state. Everybody looks at you and says you are rich. You used to be rich. You are becoming down. This is very spiritual. You are coming down. Don't wait. Verse 19. Let's go 18. 18. No, give me 19. Or give me 20. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If you open, I will come in and have fellowship with you. Oh, amen. amen. Oh, amen. amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. The next one. Matthew 10, 33. I don't have time. Those who deny God, they deny Him in public. Are you a Christian? Not really. Like, I go to church. So, I don't Can you imagine you are in an office and they say one led by the spirit should take us to prayer. Sister is standing there, can't pray. Then the Muslim will say, Allah And God looks at you there. He say, You want promotion? I remember I was a student in my school, a very bad boy. One day he said, My housemaster, who knows I was a very bad boy, but my mom is a pastor said, Yali, pray. That day they regretted. I didn't pray in English. I prayed in Chi. And that made everybody laugh. But I still remember the prayer. Mm-hmm. Every Everybody's eyes were opened. I said, El Shaddai, Yami. My new for Zonum. And this is a boys' school, so you can just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, me, my eyes were closed heavily, and I knew they were watching. When I finished, brothers were giving me fans. But see, that was an opportunity to pray a prayer. So all of you say this after me. I, I, I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I, serve. I think sometimes even altar calls should be general. Because most people in church they are backslided. But don't come for it's an altar call. So many people know what they do. When they say people should come and receive Christ, she that one person is standing here, but the congregation are supporting. Tell them, but spiders are inside. <laughs> but can I tell you this? Me, I will never listen to salvation and I will not accept Christ again. Me. Uh, it's, it's not good to always repeat. But me, if I'm listening to radio and say, can I say I'll do it. I, I'll also say it. Because in case. I don't necessarily have to come forward and lift up my hands. But in case. Are, are you with me? Oh, then. Look at somebody saying, look, everybody read. But if anyone publicly denies me, I will openly deny him before my father in heaven. So this is one of the reasons why some people's prayers are not answered. I quite fast in 40 days. God wanted you to tell your brother, your sister about Christ. You did not do it. At all very. But you should want them to give you promotion. You want to become the best. Denying God in private, He will deny you in public before His Father. The next one. Ezekiel chapter 3, 18 to 20. Not warning the wicked. Ezekiel chapter 3. But before you give me Ezekiel chapter 3, give me, let me read it. Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. And I will never erase their names from the book of life. He said, I will never erase their names from the book of life. Simply means Saint names can be removed from the book of life. Please give it to Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. All who are victorious, this is the NLT, will be clothed in white. Okay, let's read. 
Everyone who conquers will be clothed in white, and I will not erase their names from the book of life. But I will announce before my father and his angels that are mine. So you see, the Bible said, angels rejoice when one soul is one. So when these angels rejoice, as soon as your name is the book of life, you are winning souls. As soon as your case is mentioned, the angels hurry up on your case. The angels hurry up on your case. Because you make heavens rejoice. If because of every day there's a party in heaven. The angels are happy because that sister didn't go to hell. That brother didn't go to hell. So my last scripture, because I don't have time, is Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 to 20. Ezekiel chapter 3. We've done a lot of chapter 3 today. Everybody read, go. But if I, everybody read for me, go. So this dawn, I was telling you something. 1 a.m. around 2. The Lord showed me somebody. This guy has to do God's work. I is fully chasing women. So I sent this guy a message. He has not replied to it. That God's, God is giving you a warning. The reason why you are alive is because of the assignment He has for you. Many people don't know that the day you refuse the assignment God has for you, you are near your death. Because what is keeping you alive is His assignment for you on earth. People don't know this. The easiest way to lose your life. And the way I am saying to me, Jai. And the way I am saying to me, Jai. You know what that thing is doing for you? If I want the wicked, say you are under the penalty of death, like today I've told you, go and tell people that they are this. And you fail to deliver the warning, they will die in their sins. And I hold responsible for their death. Can you imagine that they are mentioning names of people and say that you was this person your friend? Say yes. And some of you, I'm telling you that there are people in this church that are in this church, but they are not born again. The next time they call you, sit down with them and teach them the word of God. Are you here with me? How can you be a believer and go to club in night, church by day? These are the people God wants to vomit out. You have four legs on the bed in the night. You are single. And you are still praying, Oh God, I need my husband. When you talk like that, then you say, You are already occupied. Verse 19. If you want them and they refuse to repent and keep on saying they will die in their sin, but you will have saved yourself because you obeyed me. And then if you go and tell them and they don't listen, you see, let me tell you something interesting. Your duty is not to change people. Your duty is to tell them the word of God. Then take them to prayer for the Holy Ghost to change them. Know what people do? They pray. They should change. They pray, they should change, but they don't tell them the word. Prayer for people's souls is not enough. You must tell them. I tell people that the worst mistake you make in your life is to listen to me. Because as soon as you listen to me, there's no, the thing I tell you will torment you the rest of your life. Verse 20. If righteous, oh, can we read together, God? If righteous people turn from their righteousness, behavior, and ignore the obstacles are put in their way, they will die. If, and if they do not want them, they will die in their sins. None of their righteous acts will be remembered. And I will hold them responsible for their death. So you see, there comes a time that you say, My yes, say, somebody say that, oh, we were the one that started that bridge. We were the one that did that. We've done this and done that. If in this church building we're part of those contributions, God said, eh. But the assignment I gave you, stop doing it. I will, re- I will remove any memory as if you've done any good. That is why David prayed a prayer and he said that, Lord, make Ahitophel's prayers our works useless. Because Ahitophel has left 
what he was supposed to do, giving counsel to David. So David said, make his conversations null and void. And David was smart. After the prayer, he put somebody there to confess it. Read it again, everybody. No, hold. Give me TLB or TP. Obiankai. Wait, oh. if I meet you next week and I ask you this scripture and you don't remember by heart, me and you have hundred Ghana cities assignment, you give it to me. Special offering for souls. And Basenta. You don't give me this scripture, hundred cities for Basenta. Let's let's we go. If a good man becomes bad and refuse to warn him of the consequence, and the Lord destroys him, his previous good deeds won't help him. He will die in his sin. I'll hold you responsible for his death. Let's saw some of some of you see people who are backsliding. Somebody has shown disrespect to some elder. Something has done something wrong. Say, we don't pass out to young women, young as a mom. You Your duty as a Christian says so sometimes we all don't understand some of these things. So, but the word of God says this and that. If you don't want the person, the Bible said, every good that a person has done will be useless. Some say, I've done things for the Lord. Now look at me. He said, Get it behind me. I don't know you. Because the purpose of God for you after salvation is not heaven first. It will fulfill his mandate for you on earth. If you don't fulfill that mandate, we jump straight. Let's close our eyes. I don't know who does he want God to spew him out. I don't know who has left his assignment that God has given him. I don't know who has stopped going to church because somebody offended him. Or founded her. I don't know what kept you away from blood, from using your sword. But I believe that today I've done my work. I've come to give you God's word. So that that blood will not be required of me. I want you to pray to God right now. That write my name in the book of life. Don't let anything, anyone, be the reason why my name will be removed.